back to our channel. Today we're sharing with you how we turned a disgusting dirty old broom closet into a beautiful and functional pantry. This would be great for really any kind of closet that you need storage in. So this was an easy, easy DIY. If we didn't have the crazy walls that we have in our house, we would have had this done in probably a day or two. Um, but anyways, if you want to see the entire process, we're going to share it with you. Stay tuned. First things first, we've got to get this cleared out. And as I said, it is a disaster. I am thinking that we're gonna have to take these out before I can actually get this out because I can't angle it in any way to actually get this out. So that's okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep working on down here. And if you watched our wallpaper removal project in the dining room, um, this is a very similar layer here on top where it's just really crispy and we have to actually chip it away before using the wallpaper steamer to take the backing off. Luke is removing those wooden pieces for me so that I can get to chipping away at the rest of it. And I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but there was actually a like floral wallpaper in here that we pulled off um, several months ago when we started this back in July and then we put it down and picked it back up again. And now I'm just removing these metal bars while he is finishing pulling the trim out. I highly, highly recommend using a wallpaper steamer if you're going to remove any wallpaper, especially if you live in a really old house, it will make your job so much easier. to patching the plaster and we use joint compound for this we actually did a lot more than we're going to show in this um, we did almost a full skim coat in here there was lots of sanding and we did two coats to get the walls as smooth as we possibly could and then here in just a moment luke is going to start cutting the trim for around the baseboards We decided to use some leftover shoe molding and trim that we had from other projects to embellish the existing baseboards, make them look a little bit more ornate, if you will. And it saved us a little bit of money on the project. Uh, truthfully, those baseboards definitely could have used a replacement, but that's okay. It ended up looking all right in the end. Up next, I'm going to be sanding some more of that joint compound kind of just towards the end here and Luke is measuring and getting ready to cut the one by twos that we are using as the shelf mounts. We did a total of five shelves, meaning there were 10 of these one by twos that we used for shelf mounts. You will install one on each side of the wall. The shelf will sit on top of it and you could actually use another one along the back side if you wanted the extra support. Our space is so small that we just didn't feel that it was necessary and that we would need it. But of course we can always go back and add that later if we decide that we do. And we used an extra piece of that one by two to make a guide 
that would be the same size as the shelves so that we could check the level between the two mounts. And then we just use that guide to measure and mark the size of the actual shelves before cutting those. And now Luke is cutting down the one by 12s. We purchased six foot boards. And just a note, if you're doing a project like this, try to find boards that are the same depth as the closet or even a little bit shorter so you don't have to rip the boards. Um, that saved us a lot of time. Now he is sanding and then up next he will be staining. And I am using one coat of the Zinser primer. And typically when we paint, we, we don't always prime. We usually get the super paint from Sherwin Williams. That is a paint and primer combo. However, when we are working over bare plaster and joint compound, um, we just like to have that extra layer of primer. And we found a little treasure while we were doing this project. Hidden down deep in a corner of the closet was this fireplace key, is what I'm guessing it is. There is a fireplace in the office that no longer works. It is a gas fireplace, and that is what I assume that it went to. Um, then you're gonna see me here throwing on that first coat of paint. Luke is going to poly the boards, and then you will see me caulking the shelf mounts for a seamless built-in look. In my hands is an Old Home Lover's treasure chest. This is full of old like crystal knobs. There's some like random brass ones in here too. But um, on the outside of the door we have a crystal knob. On the inside it's just this plain like ugly silver one. So I'm gonna make sure that I can maybe install one of these crystal ones and it's still clear the shelf and have enough room for the door to close without hitting anything because um, I do think these are just a tiny bit bigger, but yeah, I would like it to still look pretty when it's open. So we are gonna try this and see. Just throwing the finishing touches on this project and I'm getting ready to install the shelves. And you will notice that there are varying distances between the shelves, which we did intentionally. We wanted to be able to fit some taller um, and bigger items down lower. So you will notice that there definitely is more space down there and that was intentional here in just a moment. I'm gonna show you some before and afters and for a materials list and products, you can check the description box below.
it for today's video. This space is finished. Gone are the days of the dirty old room closet. We now have a very functional and aesthetically pleasing pantry. So if you enjoyed, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed and you enjoy home renovation and DIY videos, make sure that you do that. We also plan to do a pantry organization video here very soon, so make sure your bell notification's on, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.